Hi, Daniel. Hi, Susan. How are you? We've got Daniel Reed on the line, folks. This is a treat. Daniel Reed runs, what's it called again? The West Virginia Skeptic Society. There you go. I knew it was in West Virginia and I knew it's skeptics, but you know, who knows what the, what your acronym there is. Is it something fancy? WVSS. <laughs> so this is a new group that he has started in West Virginia in the United States of America. I hope all of you are standing up and saluting the flag as we say that. I really want to get into a different discussion with you, a little more in depth, called No Psychics and Mediums Are Not the New Therapists. And this is an article you wrote for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, mm -hmm. uh, November 1st, 2023. So let's talk about this. Now, just, I don't know how we can do this quickly, so let's try um, you wrote this article called mm -hmm. No Therapists. Oh, wait. No, Psychics and Mediums Are Not the New Therapists. And you wrote right. that because I was interviewed in an article for Elle magazine back in October of 2023. Mm -hmm. And then I was on Kenny Biddle's Skeptical Help Bar. And mm -hmm. in a discussion I was having with Kenny about therapy and psychics, you were listening. Right. And you decided to write this article now tell me quickly and tell the audience quickly why do you have any credentials whatsoever to be able to speak about this subject well I, okay so i have a master's degree in counseling um i i'm in in our state the way licensure goes i'm not i'm not a licensed professional counselor i'm a licensed school counselor and so uh, well, there were two different educational tracks. But for a while, I, I practiced or as a as a therapist um, in a community mental health agency, which I can do with the with the certifications that I have. Um, and so not only that, but I've also taught psychology, interviewing and counseling, advanced interviewing and counseling, uh, death and dying, human sexuality, theories of personality. I've taught those. Uh, for a number of years on the uh, for for undergraduates, and I've actually taught some graduate school courses too on uh, lifespan development, well, human development, I think they call it, and then uh, and ethics as well. So I've taught classes in the counseling field um, for a number of years. Uh, so and and not only that, but I work with I've worked as a therapist, and I am a I'm a school counselor, a licensed school counselor. So in dealing with the heartache after Valentine's yes. Day. You, yes, you, yes. I wouldn't have even thought about that, but I, I guess that is a thing. It is high school you're talking about. It high is. school? Middle school? High school. Yeah, both. High school. Um high school, middle school. Um I have uh, I remember uh, those uh, days. Yes. Uh it's it's it it, it is fun. That's part of it. The, it. the kids keep me young. So <laughs> keep you young. Okay. So I hear this all the time. Now, I know everybody listening right now hears this, hears this all the time. Whenever um, a psychic is doing something that the skeptic community or the thinking community would say is manipulative, and we call them grief vampires and exploitive, they say, but they're being helped. You're giving them hope. You're giving them um, you know, why would you, why would you want to dash their hopes and why would you want to take that away from them? And why would you, why would you want to, you know, you awful skeptics, you, you're so mean and, and your little dog too. They're just, because how awful. They're, they're happy now and you want them to be happy, right? Well, yeah, I, I thought I wanted people to be happy, but it, <laughs> but well, so that argument we get all the time is that they are the, the cheap alternative to therapy you can get an appointment with a with a psychic pretty easily and they will sit and talk with you isn't it kind of the same thing as talking to your great aunt louisa or your best friend and they're going to give you some good advice what explain that to me in the limited well, amount of time we have okay so if you look at it that that, that, that they're they're happy now happiness is not uh, and this may sound counterintuitive but happiness isn't the goal wellness is the goal if you are happy all the time there's something wrong you're not there's no one is happy all the time 
No one is sad all the time. There's a normal range of emotions that you fluctuate between those. Now, if you stay low for an extended period of time and to the point where it is um, depression, major depression, to the point where it's it's a continual battle for you, that's an issue. Um, and you say, okay, so you go to a therapist. If, if the person is suffering from unresolved grief, then they and they stay in this low emotional range that's and and you go someone goes to a therapist and they get this little or sorry goes to a psychic and they get this little blip of happiness that's okay that's great for that moment but has that contributed to that person's overall wellness are there did that psychic give that person coping skills to deal with issues where they're going to fall back into that state of depression and will they then know what to do will they recognize it coming on will they know what to do the emotional wellness is the key and um you know they you can make someone feel good a, a drug addict is the, the example that I, I believe that i used in the article you can give someone a cocaine addict cocaine and they will feel better for a while. But did you really help them? And the answer is no, you didn't. You've given them a false, a false sense of, of, of happiness or a false sense of, of, of that, that good feeling that they would get from that. But, but you haven't helped them at all. This is wonderful. I'm writing some of this down. I, I guess what, when you think about this issue, and separate the fact that psychics are not communicating with the dead or they're not seeing your future. Let's just put that to the side that they mm -hmm. are. That's not true. And focus just on the idea that they're giving therapy to people like, cause they're having somebody to talk to and it's inexpensive and getting an appointment's pretty darn easy with these, you know, psychics you can find everywhere. And when I say psychics, I also mean mediumship that's mm -hmm. just people who communicate with the dead. So so really what we're talking about here is that these people are not trained to be able to handle situations that can get really dicey really quickly. Right. And, um, and I'm thinking about part of the reason why we decided to do this interview right now is because I had just put up a video on my Psychics Explained channel of a psychic medium who gave a reading to a woman who during the reading over Facebook live mm -hmm. in the chat, she starts talking about how she's going to harm herself and how she is um, in distress. And he starts making statements to her like, Oh, well, you know, you're going to just um, make that happen to yourself. If you keep having those ideas, you're going to, you're going to make it happen. And then he says things like, you know, maybe you, you should um here's an 800 number to call and right. then other people in the comment section are saying yeah we all feel that way sometimes and oh here why don't you pet a dog or go volunteer at the animal shelter or maybe you'll feel better if you decide to help out somebody who's in bad shape this is something that you could get a hobby said. get a hobby yeah. get a hobby yeah. yeah so these are the things that were happening so i put out that video it's on my channel called well, let's see what it's called darn it too many tabs open at once. Oh, it's right here in front of me. Okay, so that video is called. What is it in front of me? So that video is called Psychic Benner Calls 911. And I have some asterisks on there saying warning viewers because it is quite difficult to watch. And I want people to know that before they they dive into it. So this is what was I mean, you wrote an article after the first, after the L magazine, and now we're talking about this again because of this video, your thoughts. Right. But the, you know, the, the idea that people can change their mental state just by doing something to, okay, pet a dog, that'll make you feel better. Really? If it were that easy and that simple? Um, yeah, dogs are comforting and there are therapy dogs that go in and people are, they, they pet them and they love them and they snuggle with them while they're doing a therapy session. And 
they're helpful. But the the issue is that again, what what is that advice really doing other than saying, oh, well, it's just so easy. You should just be able to do this. Just change your mind. You've got to, you just need to put on a happy face and turn that frowny face upside down and you'll be happy and fine. And that's not the case. If everyone did, if every, if it were so easy to be happy, people would, there would be no sadness or depression in the world. And it's not easy. You, you, my thinking is when people say, well, you just need to get a grip and you need to maybe go out and get a hobby. Or, do they think these people want to be miserable and that they're, they're making a conscious choice to be miserable? Now, true. Some people are, some people, as my grandfather would say, they wouldn't be happy if you gave them a million dollars, they'd find something. Well, that bill's crinkled. You know, there would be something wrong with it. Um, but that's the exception to the rule more so than the rule. And the, the other thing that's not really being taken into account is the fact that there's biochemical factors at play. There are people who have um, physiological reasons why they are depressed. Yes, there are situational reasons people are depressed. Yeah, my dog just yet the other day got hurt and put me in a foul mood for a wee while. And I'm, and so, um, he's, he's doing all right though. Um, but still that was a situational event that, re, that, that was the antecedent to my emotion of being upset. Now, some people are distressed and they, they lapse into that, but some people also have, uh, as I said, uh, physiological reasons why they're depressed they may not uh, they may have issues with serotonin they're, they may need to be on some sort of a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor which uh, get, is used for the tr treatment of depression they may have anxiety there may be any number of uh, number of physiological reasons why people are experiencing the emotions that they're experiencing and this is the example i give when you have a cold or when you have the flu, what's your energy state like? Yeah, you have your your energy's low. Do you really want to be chatty with people? No, you don't. Do you really feel like getting up out of bed and doing anything? No, you don't. And why is it that you feel that way? Because there's a bi you're, there's a biological reason why your body is reacting to the, the to this invasive sort of virus or uh, or bacteria, whatever strain of whatever you may have, if you have a, 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 an infection or if you have a viral infection or whatever it might be. So it's the same thing. Your body is having a reaction to maybe um, levels of serotonin that are not where they need to be, or there are some other, you, you can have a thyroid condition, which could lead you to have anxiety or which could lead you to have a depression and so those sorts of things need to be looked at and checked and dealt with accordingly there's other reasons people feel sad than just i'm 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 in this funk and i can't get out of it and now you know i, I i'm going to go pet this dog and it's going to make me feel better there's 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 other reasons than situational sorts of things that can cause depression mm-hmm that was a long-winded way of saying that but right now this psychic medium we're talking about he did tell her to see a medical doctor i think it'd be a good idea to see a medical doctor he said and he did give her the 1-800 mm -hmm. helpline for for um reaching out to somebody who's plan saying they're going to harm themselves but he just continued on and on just constantly droning on about well, you know, we're all not feeling so well. And he continued doing readings even after the point that they, you know, all this happened. And it was it's just excruciating to watch. Well, you when you're dealing with someone who is depressed and you're you're talking to someone who has I have done therapy with people um over the phone 
because I, I used to be on call. Um, and so I carried back in the days of pagers. I used to carry a pager and I would get called out in the middle of the night um, to go to the uh, the nearest hospital and and meet with people who were depressed, who were attempted um, to harm themselves. To harm themselves, yeah. To, that's that's the that's the, that's a nice way we'll put it. Um, so, but mm -hmm. the, but yeah. So um, it, it's it's there's you have to be with them in that moment. And you can't focus, you can't shift the focus to anything else but them in that moment. And that's one of the things that therapists are trained to do is that we are trained to make sure that we use uh, paraphrasing, empathic responses, um, identification of emotion in order so that that person understands we are with them in that moment and we are understanding cognitively what they're saying we we're developing with for them a sense of empathy we understand cognitively what they're feeling and experiencing we're not being we, we're not sympathetic because we're not feeling it ourselves but we're being empathetic so I, you know if, if someone says to me well i'm feeling really sad because um you know my my dog got got hit and i'm really 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 down about that and i said oh okay i um it sounds to me like you're 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 pretty depressed yes and 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 i would go one and maybe say something to the effect of now you said that your cat was was hurt and they would say no 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 it's my dog so if you say something that's wrong that you you bring yourself back to you correct that you you refocus and you make sure that you get the information you're identifying exactly what they're saying. You're saying it back to them. Mm -hmm. You're doing it in such a way that you're developing rapport. You don't you don't engage in um, conflict with that person. In other words, um, there's a time in therapy where it's appropriate to disagree with someone and to to purposefully challenge them in their thoughts. But there are other times, particularly when you're dealing with someone. That is in a very fragile state. You you don't do that, um, <clears throat> especially when you can't see their reactions. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm doing therapy with someone, um, you, I, I'm watching their body language. I'm watching their facial expressions. I'm watching how they're reacting. If it's over the phone, uh, there's there are times when I used to, as I said, used to have to do it over the phone. I listen very careful for vocal inflections. I listen very careful for different cues um and there was none of that that was happening that i could see it was over uh, text well yes and that's there is there is again in the u.s and i that this is that's the um one of the things that you can do here is you can text an emergency hotline and you will get emergency someone will respond back to you but what they do while they are connecting with you about that emergency, they are also in the process of connecting you with someone local. Right. Someone so who can you, actually see you some, or at right. least talk to you over the phone or something. Or telehealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can, it's, it's a, to, 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 to assume that, to assume that, that, you're going to be able to understand. I, I, I never, ever, ever, and I, and I may, this is one of the things that I try, I, when I had students, I tried to impress upon them. I never, ever, ever want to be in the situation where I just assume that I, that I think I understand what my client's talking about. I want them to very carefully spell it out for me so that I, I know, um, as well as I can possibly know, because I, there's no way for me to, to experience what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. There's no way for me to understand the depth of their pain. But for me, I, I will try my very level best to get them the help that they need based upon my what i am able to offer 
And the other thing that I have to keep in mind is there's certain levels where it is beyond what I am able to do. Right. And so at that point, then I refer out, but I make sure I make that referral and I make sure that it's, that it's to the, the appropriate, whether it's crisis stabilization or so on and so forth to the appropriate, um, to, or to the emergency room. Um, well, you know, going back to what we're actually talking about is that psychics do not have any of this training. No. I don't care how many thousands of readings you've done and, and how many people have told you, you helped me. I feel so much better. They do not have this kind of training. I think that's been very clear from your expertise that in this conversation, that this is not something that is light to get into. Um, there, This isn't help. As you said, are they contributing to overall wellness? Right. Are they giving them coping skills? Are they helping these people to become emotionally well? And obviously not. Um, they're not trained therapists. So yes, you can get in cheaply, quickly to see a psychic, but that's not helping them. They might feel better for a little bit afterwards, but it's not really helping, especially in the situation where this woman of this woman, she comes back almost every day to right. hang out with this guy for three or four hours a night and get readings or at least just converse with people. It, that can't be helping her. She's constantly saying how she's in pain and, and, you know, well, and, and that's the, that's another point that I'd like to touch upon is that the point, and I think I said this in the article as well, the point of therapy is not more therapy. Mm. The point of therapy is to discharge the person from therapy. And there's going to be folks that's going to say, that's going to take issue with that. And they're going to say, I know someone that was in therapy for 30 years. Okay. But there's chances are that was, uh, an older type under under a different type of system, because in certain types of therapeutic styles, um, psychodynamic uh, Freudian style, for example, that it, it was thought that over you had to, to destroy the person's not destroy the person you had to, to basically disassemble the person's ego and bring them down and then basically rebuild them and this took a, a period of time. And that's why you get the classic um, people lying on the couch and, and you say, well, I've been in therapy for, okay. And, and people can still be in therapy for years, but the point of therapy in our modern evidence-based perception is not more therapy. It's to discharge the person from therapy. And so in, when someone would come to see me, my goal wasn't to keep them forever. My goal was to try to get them to be able to uh, do things and exist and deal with their emotions and have their coping skills to do all these things without me. Now, everyone has setbacks at times and so, or new problems could arise. So that doesn't mean that they wouldn't necessarily return, but the, the goal, even if they do return, the goal is the same to discharge them from therapy. If you're going to a doctor and the doctor for, for a broken arm and the doctor wants to keep treating you for that same broken arm for 14 years, there's an issue <laughs> that you're, you, so, you know, it's the you same think? thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing. And, and there are, there are some profoundly um, complex diagnoses that do take ongoing therapy over years to be able to to resolve but it's not it's not the same as again the goal is still discharge the goal is still to have that person to function at a higher level of functionality than when they came to see you it's not i'm going to keep that person coming back forever and ever ever to get their hit off of me to get their, 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 and again, I use the analogy of the drug dealer. What resources are these mediums and psychics giving to these people? Are they teaching them about cognitive distortions? Are they teaching them about irrational thoughts? Uh, and again, I'm flip-flopping between um, uh, theoretical approaches here, in, in psychological theories. So still, the goal is the same. You identify the issue, 
you help the person and hopefully get them to not need you anymore. Right. Absolutely. Well, Daniel, this has been fascinating. I'm <laughs> really looking forward to um, the feedback we're going to get from people. I think this is helping me really wrap my mind around a lot of a lot of my understanding of the psychic world. Going into it as I have for years, you know, I've been focusing a lot on the readings. But really what I need to do is I'm starting to understand a lot more. And, and having these conversations with people like yourself really helps me a lot because as, as I'm understanding it, we need to disassociate in some ways the harm that psychics do in pretending to be counselors versus the harm they do when they say that they're communicating with dead people, which mm -hmm. obviously isn't happening. Those are kind of two separate things, even though they always seem to keep pulling them back to being one thing. It's where can people find out more about you and where can they uh, reach out to you? Folks can find me at www.danielareed.com or they can reach out. We uh, There's info at um, West Virginia Skeptic Society com, or you can find us on our Facebook group because we I, I try to pe post something new there every day and uh, something in the skeptical vein every day for folks to, that would be interested in perusing that. So I'm uh, pretty easy to find. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. You're quite welcome.